Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Wednesday, April 10th. We are back. We got a nice little slate and we have all day baseball today. So it is a, a fun day to pay attention to what's going on in baseball as we have sports all day long. Now, what we're going to go over today is we're going to start off by the perfect lineups yesterday, the winning lineups in both FanDuel and DraftKings, and then we're going to get into today's slate and start off by the pitchers, followed by stacks. Now, before we get into it all, please come join us at LineStar. Only $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do, all the props, all the DFS, you get it all. We do have the brand new Dinger tool that has been great for props as well as dfs and we may have some more stuff coming down the line for you guys now let's get into the slate itself and see what we can do here uh or i should say the show itself as we're going to start off with the perfect lineups uh for baseball not for basketball all right and there are games going already with Julian just crushing it. All right. So perfect lineup on DraftKings. We have Chris Bassett and Tyler Glasnow as the two pitchers. Glasnow pitched just an absolute gem, uh, putting up a huge score, almost 46 points. And Bassett had a good game. So those were the two perfect lineup pitchers. And then outside of that, it was all one-offs. We had Shang Langoliers who put up three home runs. Uh, Alonzo had a decent game. IKF did all right. Morel hit a grand slam. Uh, Acuna had three stolen bases. Jacob Young had a couple stolen bases. Just all around, you know, a bunch of random players doing well. And that's kind of what happens on nights like this where no team scores more than six runs. So it's a little harder for those stacks to happen and come through when that happens. So that's what happened. Stacks weren't in the perfect lineups, but they still could have won you some stuff. Uh, DraftKings winning lineup, Glasnow and Lopez. So they went Lopez, not Bassett. Uh, but they had a little bit of an Oakland stack with Texas as a run back. And then all one-offs, and they won by six points. So congrats to uh, Haulers, who it does looks like it was a single lineup takedown. Congrats to you. You won 50K, and let's move it over on to FanDuel. All right, so on FanDuel, Tyler Glass now put up just a giant 73 fantasy point uh night and then the winning lineup for hitters it was two man uh, washington stack then a langoliers in there and all one offs after that with the winning lineup going to aaron costa who's just been crushing it to start this se season and he had glass now he had a four man oakland stack and a three-man Washington stack that uh, got it done with Oakland Shane Langoliers one-off, which you really just needed to have due to his three home runs. What a night. So uh, congrats to Costa. It was a super, super contrarian lineup, and uh, it got it done. So good for you. Congrats, and let's move it on to today's slate. Get over on to DraftKings and pitchers. We'll move that out of the way a little bit. All right, so the highest owned pitcher right now is Cutter Crawford. Uh, you know, before we get into this, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on weather-wise today. There are a couple spots we could see postponements. Uh, Cincinnati looks fairly bleak as far as the weather. I know we are only have it at a 40% uh ppd chance right now and i might put it a little bit higher but that is a you know wait and see approach we will know more as the day goes on so make sure you check out that game next the atlanta one is absolutely in some uh worry we're really not sure what's going on uh yet there but there could be uh postponement or delay or something happening in that game 
I'm not too worried about this Baltimore and Red Sox game. I think most of the rain is going to be done prior to the game starting or a slight delay and then the play is dry. All right, so Cutter Crawford, 7,900, highest owned uh, pitcher here. And Crawford's been very good to start the season. Has only allowed one earned run and 10.2 innings. And he's had a very, very solid K rate as well. So 26 over his last 20, 26% over his last 20 starts. However, it is against Baltimore and he does definitely struggle versus lefties more than uh, righties. And this Baltimore offense has a ton of lefties that they can play and a ton of switch hitters that will can go lefty. So it is a rough spot for Cutter Crawford, I think. He is one of the pitchers that I will probably have a little bit of, but if he's going the highest owned, he's a little more in the fade category for me than he is in the, I got to play him. Uh, next, we got Marcus Stroman. Stroman at 9,600 is just too expensive for me. Now, it is a decent spot. Miami offense isn't good. They strike out 22%. Uh, but Stroman just doesn't have very much upside at 9.6K, and that is my issue here. Now, today is a bit of a toughing, tough pitching uh, day, so, you know, I understand if you want to, um, I understand if you want to play him because the median projection likely looks okay, kind of safe, but, like, the ceiling just isn't there. And I really think we need to go to the ceiling. So that, that is the issue there for me going with Stroman. Next, Cody Bradford. Uh, Cody Bradford, 9K is pricey for this guy, but he has been very, very good lately. Uh, his K rate has been okay lately. Four Ks in 7.2 innings, six in five innings. Um 3.65 FIP over his last five starts with a, you know, 21% uh, K rate or so. Uh, the only worry thing for me here is the stat cast data allowing a ton of fly balls, a uh, decent amount of hard contact. The K combined K rate is pretty solid here. And then he also has the fact that he's at home. He's averaging 45% more fantasy points at home. And Oakland striking out 29% versus lefties. So there is some strikeouts upside, but that price tag for him does scare me off a little bit. I do like him. Uh, if he was lower owned, I'd be a little more uh, willing to push him in. But at high ownership, it's a little scary. Hunter Green, I would really like this spot. Uh, we really need to pay attention to weather here. If it's not PPD'd, there's chance for delays or whatnot in the game, which would knock him out of uh, of the game most likely. So big time worried about Hunter Green weather situation. Now Dylan Cease is the guy I I expect to be the highest owned pitcher. I'm surprised that he's not coming in right now. Maybe that changes throughout the day, but he's been pitching very well. He has great BVP data versus uh, the Cubs, and he has you know, more strikeout upside than anybody else on this slate. So definitely intrigued by going with some cease in this spot. And pitching is rough today. So really not looking to get too different outside of that. I mean, I guess you could go Cole Irving, but the upside's just not really there for me to price uh, go there. At least he's only 6,800. He went 81 pitches last game. You know, if he gets up to 90 and is able to keep Boston at bay a little bit, maybe. But he he just doesn't have much of a ceiling, and that's my issue with uh, going to Cole Irving. Um, and let's get over to DraftKings or FanDuel here. FanDuel, highest stone. Dylan Cease, no surprise. I think he should be. Hunter Green coming in next. Once again, got to worry about weather there. Allen Winnings, we didn't talk about. Uh, we do need to worry about weather here also, but he is kind of an interesting spot at only 5,500. He showed a real nice ceiling in a couple games last year. 
It's a good spot. Mets aren't great versus righty. 23.4% K rate. Low Woba, only 300. The wind's blowing in. So I think there's a lot of factors that helps win in here. He also uh, went five and two thirds on April 2nd in minors. So he's pretty much fully stretched out and he is an interesting option uh, for cheap if you want to pay up for some bats. Uh, Strowman, 10.1. I'm kind of off. Bradford, I do think, is interesting at 8,600 on uh, FanDuel, and I'll definitely probably get some of him. Um, Cutter Crawford, I think it's a tough spot for him, but I would absolutely consider with the way Boston has been pitching. Again, I like him at lower ownership, higher, better than I like him at high ownership. Now, let's uh, get in some stacks here. Hopefully the stacks go a little quicker than they did yesterday for me. And it appears it uh, should go that way. All right. So highest own stacks for the day is Milwaukee versus Hunter Green, uh, which is very, very interesting because Hunter Green's actually a very good pitcher. So, if this game plays, I would worry about stacking Milwaukee due to Hunter Green being a solid pitcher, uh, especially at higher ownership here. But it is, you know, very good park uh, to hit in. A lot more home runs. Hunter Green lets home runs. And that's about two per nine in uh, Cincinnati. So if this game plays, they are the high stack. I would expect that number to be lower, though, just because of the weather issue, which I don't think is really, you know, in consideration for the algorithm we have to get up uh, ownership. Next, we got Texas coming up. Ross Stripling just isn't great as a pitcher. He's not bad, just not great. 4.41 FIP over his last 20, but down to 3.1 over his last five. Uh, this Texas offense is just good and don't mind going there whatsoever. So let's get over to some higher projected lineups here. And uh, see what we got. So Atlanta coming in at high uh, as a pretty high projection here. Quintana, he is a solid pitcher, but he can give it up to righties a little bit. And there's a lot of righties that can really hit in this lineup. Uh, Albies has been hot, has more power as a righty. Ozuna has been hot. Olsen's a lefty, but he can pretty much get it to anybody. And obviously Acuna is solid and Yankees I think are in a very very good spot moderately owned uh very good offense a lot of different ways to stack them and Ryan Weathers is not good 6.13 FIP over his last five 5.08 over his last uh 20 allows a lot of contact allows a lot of people on base and Yankees will absolutely take those walks when they're there so I think they are pretty interesting and then Milwaukee and Texas popping up as well. So let's get over to the value stacks for uh, this. And Oakland is popping up versus Cody Bradford. So Bradford has been extremely good lately. Uh, 4.2 FIP over his last 20. So, you know, he's been a bit better than what we're used to. I don't mind taking some swings on Oakland due to the fact that Bradford's high uh, fly ball rate, his hard hit rate are both kind of high, just kind of breeds fantasy points when you can get a couple home runs like Langleyers did last year. Now, I don't really love the five-man Oakland stack because Oakland just isn't going to get there very often, but I don't mind sprinkling in some Oakland today. Boston's popping up a little bit. I do like the spot for Boston, especially value-wise. They got a lot of hitters that can uh can do it and Cole Irvin is just you know average MLB hitter so don't mind picking on him getting over to a ceiling stack Atlanta Cincinnati uh Cincinnati I think is a very interesting one if this game plays I'm absolutely intrigued by them at low ownership Wade Miley is a bit hit or miss if he's good and 4.93 fit over his 20 uh, starts say that he hasn't been good often. So don't mind picking on uh, them a little bit with some Cincinnati. 
And then just to show some uh, higher implied team totals, we obviously have the Braves. We have... Man, there's so many different Brave stacks. You know what? Let me go this way. Click uh, the teams here. So highest implied team totals, Braves. Houston's at 5.1, so just behind the Braves. Texas at 5, Baltimore at 4. 4.8 and Boston at 4.8. So those are, you know, most of the stacks you're going to be interested in is the higher total wise, the pivots, the Oakland's Milwaukee 3.9 implied total. And they're one of the, you know, chalkier stacks on the slate is just crazy. That's why I'm totally against going there. Now, bullpen wise, uh, Cincinnati has a terrible bullpen, so I don't mind picking on them there. Uh, other bullpens to pick on would be the Padres. Uh, Houston's bullpen hasn't been great. Miami's bullpen is terrible, and Ryan Weathers is terrible. So those Yankee stacks are looking uh, mighty interesting. So that'll do it for us today. Uh, I hope you guys win some money. We'll be back. I, I don't know if we're going to be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna, there's gonna be work done on my house literally outside of my window. So it might be a little bit loud to try and get one of these done, but I'm going to try. Hopefully there is a window. If there isn't a show, you know, that's why you guys have a good one. Let's make some money. Good luck. Bye.